Welcome to the Oral History Program uh, organized by the Heritage Center. So, my name is Shanmugam. Uh, I joined this IIT in the year 1973 as a research scholar in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. And uh, Professor Kumarasamy, who is with me, he joined much ahead of me. Anyway, we will know from him when he joined. So, now I will ask Professor Kumarasamy about his uh, initial experience in IIT. Probably I will also add on my experience as he says. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, actually, my first interaction with IIT was when I wanted to apply for MS. I asked for the, uh, that was the time when IIT Madras started the MS program. I applied for MS application form. The office sent me PhD application form. So, I could not I, I did not know what to do with that. I did not even you know contact them for the MS application form. But then afterwards I learned that a person who has university rank could directly be applying for PhD. I happened to be in that bracket, but I was not really knowing that, so I did not use the form. I left it at that. But then afterwards, after a few months, there was an advertisement for the senior technical assistant position. So, which I applied. Surprisingly, uh, within a week of completion of the interview, appointment order was given. Because nowadays it takes much longer time. And then I joined in another two weeks. And uh, as far as the IIT, my entry to IIT Madras is concerned, for the very first time when I came in, I did not even know that there are bus service. I just walked from the main gate up to the. I think it is the same area. story with me. <laughs> <laughs> I also walked in on the first day thinking that bus service is exclusively, exclusively for IITians, not for us. So, it was a good walk. No? Yeah, we started in the same way. <laughs> Please go ahead. And for, uh, I had, you know, I had been in the uh, IIT service for 41 years. Uh, all 41 years, I was living only inside the campus. I started in Kaveri Hostel. I know when they said student strength is more, you have to vacate the room. I vacated, went to Tharamani guest house because they said we will provide you some room in Tharamani guest house, so called non guest wing of Tharamani guest house. So uh, I moved there and then after staying there for about two and a half years, they said that no, 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 Tharamani guest house also is not available for you, so you have to go out. So we pleaded with them and finally they gave X type. X type is a single room ac accommodation where uh, you know you could stay. and. Boyle saying that I got married, mm -hmm. okay, and I convinced my wife that. Uh, Which year uh, you got married, sir? Uh, 76. 76, okay. <laughs> By the way, I got married in 74 itself. So <laughs> please go. Ahead. Yeah. So, uh, because already there were, you know, married people staying in X type. So, I told my wife that wife and, you know, their family there, my father and others, that it is going to be okay as far as you are concerned. I did not want to go out at all. So, then after about uh, three months of our stay in X type, we D1 block was built at that time. We got D1 and in about you know three, four months D type we got. Oh, very quick. That was seven years after my admission joining IIT Madras. I got the quarters to which I was eligible at the time of joining. So, that was so, the you know type of time frame uh, right, right. Uh, of uh, no, in department, years. mechanical department we have so many labs. So, you can also tell in which lab you were <laughs> uh, asked to. See, initially after my BE, I finished BE in 1968. 68 was the year where uh, you know there was death of employment. Mainly because 1965 China, China war, immediately government felt we need more engineers. You know, our type of planning was so bad. So, they introduced the three year BTEC program for graduates. I think every institute had such a program. So, they were all uh, recruited, they were all coming out. So, that means in 68, a batch, five year batch was coming out and then three year batch I also was yeah, coming out. Right, right. So, we could not really get a job. But I studied at PhD College of Technology. Our director, Professor G.R. Damodaran, felt that he should be engaging at least some. Uh, you know, students retain some students. He orbitally selected 15 of us and gave us job in the PhD Industry Institute mm -hmm. as a senior stipend training. And after I went to that uh, uh, you know PhD Industry Institute, uh, 
the works manager one day after three months i should say suddenly felt that i am not fit to be in the manufacturing side <laughs> initially in, i was put in, in the manufacturing in, incidentally i am a manufacturing <laughs> engineer <laughs> and i so, joined the manufacturing <laughs> section at that time good uh, yeah. so he somehow felt that because the main reason was in the manufacturing i was assigned to grinding mm. because my btech project was on grinding dynamometer for internal centrifugal grinding so he felt that you should go to grinding shop i went to grinding shop grinding shop being the final operation you can't allow a graduate trainee to operate any of them because the whole uh, you know job will be yeah but with that background when you came here what was assigned to you no no, no. Have, uh, the works manager after 3 months mm. so i was allowed to simply watch mm. the grinding machine you know doing the final job i just you know spent 3 months like that one fine morning works manager felt that i am not fit to be watching like that he pushed me to training center in the training center they were doing uh, you know the assembly line a uh, process for assembling a centrifugal pump so i was asked again watch but only you know finally give uh, an idea of how to improve open ended question so i went through that prepared one uh, write up of what they are doing and said my own suggestions i don't know what really you know impressed immediately he told kumar sami you will now go come to design office and in the design office there was a design engineer who had submitted his papers he wanted to quit after a lot of experience but he said you will go with him and learn about design before he uh, goes away design of pumps design of pumps yes so now uh, now <laughs> with that pump experience you joined our department in the division where the pumps were pumps, designed and fabricated yes. there's a connectivity. connectivity see in life always <laughs> no, you have connections <laughs> okay so right. actually to to my uh, you know so, uh, advantage what happened is this particular man who was very experienced he knows you know how to how not to teach oh <laughs> okay so uh, because he knows i am a raw graduate he told kumar sami please take this book Great. this tells you how to design you design so i will make the calculation like an assignment i will take it to him he will correct and correct so one month went i did not really finish my design so he left but then in the phd industry institute what they did was they asked the professor of hydraulic machines to head the design afterwards mm -hmm. professor kem srinivasan i can tell his name mm -hmm. so professor kem srinivasan became the head of the design he being an academician he taught me how to do the design right. and he told me what some design is not the process of only finding the dimensions but also following it up mm -hmm. go to the pattern shop you do the design go to the pattern shop get it so made you learn manufacturing through design yes very good then you know go to the uh, casting get it cast go to the machine shop do it and then he said you as a person you, you are attached to design but you should know how your product works so you will also do work in testing testing of the pumps so that really you know gave me an exposure to all uh, sections of the design and process with this experience when i applied for iit iit felt that yes this boy could really be taken so, so you are assigned to which lab side hydro hydro turbo machine hydro lab. turbo machine that was a lab initially started then it got bifurcated into thermal turbo and hydro no turbo. no no that is uh, yeah, by, yeah. by the time i joined it was it was called as turbo machines water turbo machines here ah that's a history yes <laughs> so uh, it was a unit uh, no, uh, united lab once, yes no? yeah initially together. initially when the what german are, what was the name of according the to the german program it was turbo machines lab turbo there machines. were two halls now you see in iit madras every lab had had only one hall this laboratory alone had two, two halls base. two base yeah, two base two base one was called uh, turbo machines here other was called turbo machines water water or we called it as water hall and air hall <laughs> but then just before i joined the iit felt that it should become a separate lab so water water and air cannot mix yes. so they wanted to separate Very so good. it was called as hydro turbo machines lab i was yeah. allotted to turbo hydro turbo machines lab because was called the thermal term. thermal turbo machines lab yeah, yes good, so then um, actually the, uh, i should at this point of time did you, did you have any collaboration with the germans at that time or uh, after you joined uh, no, after I, actually when i joined there was one german uh, i should say technical officer the german professor already left technical officer everyone was there in fact i started my work with that technical officer remember his name by any uh, chance krimse krimse, yeah. krimse good so he was actually he had taken up on work from an industry from madurai 
and he was doing some work. So he, in, you know, put me into that job, and that became my MS problem. Okay, so you completed MS yes. after joining. After that, and in fact, no, I should also tell you that uh, the way in which IIT encouraged their staff to acquire higher degrees was that you apply for the application form, you have to pay the money, and then apply. Once you get selected, you are registered. No fees to be paid except for final thesis evaluation. All the other things were given as so, a part of the. So what uh, you missed as a student yes. to uh, come as a MS candidate. Yes. Now you have joined the IIT and you became a you know, MS scholar MS. and come. And then no no no. At you, the end of all that, the moment I finished my MS, they gave me one increment also. Ah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. So it's like you know. <laughs> to just to you know, uh, join him, even though I joined in 73 as a research scholar, by 74 I got married and financially I should also be stable enough. So I joined IIT as a senior technical assistant. I think you also joined as yeah, a yeah, senior, senior technical assistant. So, but in a different group, it is called production engineering at that time, production in section, um, and joined a lab called metrology lab. And that was the only lab which was air conditioned <laughs> in the whole of IIT at that time because you have to maintain 20 degrees Celsius for all measurements. So, we were really <laughs> you know, proud that we were in an air conditioned lab. In fact, at yeah. this point, I should also tell that see, metrology is one, hydro turbo machines another, mechanical handling. Mm. These were three unique divisions which are available in IIT Madras which showed that they would like to nurture even a small area, you know, even now such things are continuing. Only thing is, you know, some areas are getting closed down because people are not available. The areas are very, uh, you know, very, very interesting nice. area. Yes. Still, IIT Madras metrology is supposed to be the best in the part of this country as well as in the Asia. Because I, sh I can remember that because of those things only, uh, you know, you could have an extended type of uh, German agreement. Right. Later, you know, when other oh, yeah. laboratories did in not fact, really have. By the way, in 1990, our lab got uh, another assistance, uh, nearly a crore or so, to modernize our research facilities. So, we added a lot of equipments. That never happened to any other uh, lab or any other department. Yeah, I, I we should also call. tell about you know mechanical engineering being occupying the maximum area within uh, the campus. That is the experience which I faced <laughs> later on. So probably you can come to my period. So I was also HOD from 2006 to 2009, and you can cover you know the intermediate period. Yeah. So I can talk about. Uh, Actually, you know initially you know Professor uh, Ajay Narayan Mukti was there. Right. Was here. Uh, all of us used to call him as PME, even though there were five professors. At that time, there were only five, you know, when I joined. Uh, but he, he only was really called as PME. PME means a professor, professor of, of mechanical, mechanical engineering. That's uh, <laughs> okay. And then, uh, do you know he, one thing? He was also uh, his appointment letter. He was also appointed as a head of the department. Okay. So not only professor of mechanical engineering, but uh, head of the department for 14 years. He was a HOD. If I'm correct, you can correct me. If I'm wrong. No, I do not know the total uh, period. But okay, but then the point was that after his term of uh, professor, uh, head of the department was over, and then he handed then, over to the next person. No, no, then the, the, the rotation started. Yeah, that's it. The uh, senior person was asked to, you know, asked to be take. the head of, uh, head of the department for three years. So that started after a long period, if I am correct. But, but the point was that uh, the PME was so powerful, yeah, powerful, very powerful. So powerful that the next person who came head of the department did not have the guts to go and tell Professor Anamurthy to the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, instead of that, he asked the department to move to the place where he was there. Uh, if I am correct, it was Professor M.C. Gupta? No, Professor M.C. Professor B.S. Murthy. B.S. Murthy. So, so the B. S. Murthy. head of the la department office was shifting. <laughs> it is not a permanent one, shifting or, you know, from lab to lab. Yeah. So, it shifted to IC Engines lab, okay. then after it was Professor M. C. Gupta, yeah. then it shifted to Thermodynamics lab, mm -hmm. then it was Professor Raidu, shifted to, shifted to you know, at that time uh, Machine Mach Elements lab. Right, right, I remember. Then the, uh, you know, Professor Prithviraj became the head, by that time Professor Raidu. By the way, Prithviraj belongs to Hydro Turbo or Thermal, thermal Turbo? He thermal belongs turbo. to Thermal Turbo. So, other side of your lab. Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, when he became the head of the department, at that time, Professor Anand Mukti retired hmm. because he was there after he became dean, he became director, then he retired. So, 
the room was available so professor uh, prithviraj could so move to the head yeah, department now the uh, mechanical engineering office is located in the mechanical science <laughs> box in the first floor so yes. that's nice so there is original place but for a short period of you know during the headship of three of our uh, uh, colleagues it was operating from some other place afterwards uh, you know this has become the permanent mm, good so but uh, you completed a phd immediately after yeah your after my immediately after my ms i registered for phd mm -hmm. and then also did in the same way same mm -hmm. type of ruling mm -hmm. no fees mm -hmm. uh, until you know the examination fee only and at that time actually the moment you finish phd you are given two increments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was given two increments but the pay commission which came at that time mm -hmm. said that Merging. PhD is a must to be a faculty member. So yeah. then, I eight administration read the rule and said the increment given to you will be cut. You will be restored to your original. Oh, oh. So it's that was not new. given to me. Okay, it's news to me. Earlier they were encouraging. The immediately after PhD, two increments were given. Yes, yes. If I am correct, I also got increment as a STA when I joined. But then I went to Bombay. I was told that you cannot uh, continue here. and then you have to go out in fact uh, they were discouraging the inbreeding uh, in you know, they, 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 in in yeah, in so uh, i went out to i and that was still remember? still holds you know uh, three years yeah. yeah three years of uh, one was some is necessary yeah you have to be away for three years i took it really literally went iit bombay after three years i come back in 80s professor kumar sami continued <laughs> <laughs> but that was not inbreeding eh? yeah yeah that's not inbreeding no okay. <laughs> because you are the faculty member you are already you doing that. but okay. you were a student and doing so for no, you no. it became inbreeding i became a senior technical assistant uh, but okay maybe for me that that rule was not applied okay okay then uh, and uh, okay we should you know when we talk about the way in which the department has grown you see when the, the rotation of the head department came there are several things which also changed so professor prithviraj brought in some changes where he you know wanted he maintained a list of faculty their birthdays you know trying to yeah, uh, I, uh, greet them on their birthdays yeah, I, i used to get i remember and then you know uh, before the vacation starts he used to send a note saying that you are assigned vacation you can go on vacation like otherwise we used to you know uh, make a proposal and only if you remember we'll go otherwise we will be you know continuing our work Uh, we'll be on vacation but doing the work pithra i brought it like that and uh, no now the departmental activities you have elaborated can you say something about uh, other sectors like you also uh, served in hostel sector in yeah. fact i was also in the hostel sector almost simultaneously if i am correct 93 to 96 i was warden of uh, alaknanda hostel do you remember no no earlier to that i was uh, oh. warden of ganga hostel earlier to that ah. and then i became Was chairman it? later okay chairman after uh, chairman two after yeah. 2008 or so if i am correct i mean uh, ganga was 93 to 96 okay ha ah, it's coinciding okay. with coinciding. my period okay. Okay, because I used to get assistance from you in when my office assistant is away. Can you recall your experience as a yeah. warden of as Ganga? First of all, first of all, mm -hmm. you know I should But first tell you how did you get into this get hostel into sector? Actually, uh, it's I very very, very tough. It's very competitive. Everybody wanted to be a warden those days. Uh, okay, uh. so actually, you know, I should say that uh, I myself felt that I'm not student friendly. Mm -hmm. So I was keeping away. Uh, mm. away from entering the into the sector. hostel zone except for you know sometimes you know during uh, mardi gras i think like that when they require some other people mardi to help then got changed to sarang, sarang. Okay. so at that time they used to call for some assistant we used to go uh, uh, but then otherwise you know we were not really going into the hostel sector at all but then when professor vengatrailu you know became the i think this is the same person who also pulled me in yeah. Uh, but the way in which he pulled me is entirely different uh, i should i should tell you the full story in fact uh, you know he had been uh, in uh, he had been uh, you know given indication that he will be uh, joining as a dean mm. uh, so one night he walked into my room because i was doing research in my room so he just if i am correct he belongs to thermal turbo thermal turbo he so, belongs to hydro turbo oh, but okay. we have a common entrance so mm. he walked into my room and uh, kumar sami uh, i want a help he said i asked what See, I have been uh, requested to become a dean. I want you to become a cultural advisor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told him, uh, Professor Vengatrayal, I do not know what is IIT culture. 
and I cannot advise. <laughs> so please leave me. He did not disturb me. He went back and then just, you know, allowed me uh, uh, to think in whatever way. Like after I don't know, maybe two years. Two years. One fine morning, he called me. He said, "Kumar Sami, I want somebody to be chief election officer. Mm -hmm. We are conducting student elections." Uh, I want you to be the chief election. At that time, you know, CNCSN was yeah, the yeah, yeah. chief election officer for the India. At that time, I could say, I want you to be the chief election officer for our institute. Student election. Student, student, student election. election. So, uh, you will be the whole, uh, you know, uh, authority for doing it. I want you to take it up and do it. And I think, if I remember correct. The election is student friendly activity or not student friendly activity? No, no. <laughs> no, he said. <laughs> Whether it is student friendly but or not, is when, not when not. you are controlling, you are not student friendly. Yes. So, <laughs> so that way it was. Uh, th that way it matched your. It matched my this thing. So, so what we really made at that time was, you know, we made uh, a scheme by which uh, the posters for the students will be prepared only by the chief election officer and given. Approved by the chief. Approved office. by the chief. No, no, even copies will be taken. Limited number of copies will be taken by the chief election officer. Only that can be displayed. And you know their agenda, uh, their uh, manifesto. Mm. Limited number only will be made and given. That type of things yeah, we. By chance, in. do you remember the year or if it is difficult, don't try to recollect. Uh, if, if you remember, just. 1993. Remember. 93. Okay. Then, uh, okay, the the election was successfully conducted. Whatever is the scheme which we made, then uh, after that was over, then again he one day he called me, Kumar Sami. Now that you have uh, finished your chief election officer's work. What is the answer to my first question? With two years back, what two he years asked. Back, what? Mm -hmm. what is the question I asked? I want some help uh, in the student sector. Yes, uh, I don't. I don't think uh, you know it's uh, really changing. I told him, no, no, no. I am not going to ask you to be an advisor. I am thinking whether you can become a warden of a Ganga hostel, the hostel to which I belong to. So he said like that. And I said, uh, okay, you are asking me again and again. Let me think about it. I, I was going for lunch. You again. are a very careful person. No, you don't commit <laughs> the very first time. <laughs> so I was going for lunch at that time. He called me before lunch and asked. And then I was internally feeling, you know, this man is again and again asking, trying to put some, uh, you know, carrot uh, mm -hmm. like that. So uh, I went home, discussed with my wife, and then came back and felt, uh, uh, okay, I can give a try. If there is some problem, we can always uh, quit. <clears throat> so then I came back uh, after coming back from lunch. Uh, uh, he again phoned me. Uh, yes, first one I have discussed with my I feel I can give a try. This I might have told maybe at 12.45 or 1 o'clock when I just returned from lunch. At about 2.30, I get a call from me saying that, Kumar Sami, when you are going, you like the no, 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 mm. you come to my office. Mm. That's what he said. So when I went to my office, he handed over the order. Oh, good. Because by that time he has, you know, he know prepared you enough background, uh, taken the. And you should not change your mind also. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the director, got the approval, and then uh, and then gave. Okay, uh, having become, you know, I should only say that the one satisfying or one most important thing uh, in my uh, wardenship of Ganga Hostel is about uh, the way in which. Uh, we collectively prevented suicide of a student. Mm. One student did some mischief in the campus institute uh, where uh, you know he tampered with the session marks mm. uh, by, by engaging a professional locksmith. Mm, mm, mm. Not in one uh, room but several rooms. This was noticed so he was called and given a stiff warning. But then after the warning was given I think the uh, uh, people there felt that there can be some issue. So immediately I was warned to keep a tab on that student. So we kept a tab on that student and then found that the fellow was inside the room and locked it outside. Mm -hmm. So we were searching for him because we felt that he may do some mischief. But finally we found that he was only inside the room. Then we broke open took him to Malara hospital, he was saved. He has taken some tablets, but not to the text. Oh, good, good. So we could save him because of that type of uh, 
close vigilance vigilance okay. or what <laughs> set of not a, not alone me but uh, all of us but then i told when i trial of twelve that i will not have the student in my hostel <laughs> and he said we will not have him in the institute itself okay so he was uh, you know sent out of the hostel but then sent out of the institute itself beyond the point of time so and at the end of that my term was over uh, you know they said kumar sami your term is over we won't leave you now you can go peacefully but then we won't leave you so i, I think after a gap of 2 or 3 years you yeah, became chairman of uh, chairman of so they Co they called Warden. me chairman council of order they called and even at that time also what they did was they gave me uh, again called me for as a warden temporary warden because one warden was going on short term no, that, leave no that happens you know if you remember i was uh, i was a sports advisor yeah and uh, i didn't tell that i don't know sports and i <laughs> don't know advice because i was a sports on myself yeah and i was so you you <laughs> had this sense eh? i didn't have this sense you know that so if i'm correct 88 i was asked by professor narajan to be the sports advisor then i went to michigan tech on sabbatical so i couldn't complete the my period i just completed only one year of my sports and i think then after coming back i was also a electron officer like you and uh, introduced by professor tt narendra nayar to recall okay. my oh. good friend in management science uh, management department so i have i think you know, we have many common things among us and uh, probably when i became hod uh, in 2006 you remember the changes yeah. we are trying to make out um, first thing the major change is about the lab creation yes. ugpg yeah. UG can you recollect what yeah, yeah. What actually I, if i tell uh, it's like an administrator <laughs> no. telling i want uh, actually uh, the way in which you know iit uh, students are exposed to the laboratory was uh, you know they were asked to come to the laboratory that means in a particular let's say mechanical engineering lab one we call as lab one lab two uh, la experiments may be in four or five laboratories the students have to go to those laboratories and they uh, <coughs> in some laboratories they had ex exclusive setup in some laboratories they were giving the setups they used by research scholars mm. and uh, the idea was the btec student gets an exposed to a research problem that was the idea but then sometimes what happens is if that research student is deep into his research he may not allow the experiment to be given and uh, you know he would not allow the student to meddle with meddle, with them. meddle or i say you know he uh, even do experiments on it on it so he will only allow them to read uh, take the readings so it was uh, it was felt that we need to have separately ugpg lab few years before your term itself i think uh, i don't know when it was professor uh, ganeshan sir ganeshan talk period, about it but the, no no at that time a proposal was made to mhrd under that the head of modern professor vi radha krishnan okay uh, under uh, the head of modernization right. funds were got to establish ugpg lab hmm. but the fund was very very meager if you recollect something like 20 lakhs or 30 lakhs in those days 20 with 20 lakhs something could have been done but okay but then what happened was two faculty members i don't want to name them were put as coordinators for that they bought equipment for their own laboratories and it really did not materialize but when you are head of the uh, department you felt that using the research setups for the students is really curtailing both one is that uc students are not allowed to play around the setup to get whatever he wants and uh, the research scholar is deprived of uh, you know using it fully for his so this is not my feeling alone it's a feeling of all the faculty members in the department which i reflected as head of the department so it was not my feeling alone so i was i had a support of all the faculty no, members but, but the point was that you see moving from uh, an engineering college to iit madras mm. i was feeling that we were giving real exposure to the students on the Particular. ongoing problems in every laboratory mm. because you may come for doing experiment for a particular uh, setup but then you look around also what is happening mm. so that mean they are aware of what is happening in several laboratories now they don't get that mm. they enter into ugpg lab they simply how they set up there's a procedure written procedure you know they simply follow get the reading note down you know there is even observation sheet made ready by the coordinator they fill the numbers you know make the i, I don't i don't know but whether that, it's that, a real, yeah, uh, that, real but that can happen only during the project work when they do project in the labs 
definitely they interact with the scholars but then now <laughs> nowadays even the talk is project to be substituted with courses okay that's a different change change in the curriculum okay but change anyway the, our idea was to expose undergraduate student directly to the equipment no, no, but then if you remember correct actually you know when we when you established the vgpg lab what we said was the laboratories will be open any time students can walk in any time do right, experiment right, right. but that has not taken place we yes. have the schedule and the students come at that time to there and it is all uh, programmed in such a way that you do it only in one way mm. it is not as though you know i learn a subject i want to do a different type of experiment i don't think it has really now come to that extent yeah, of but uh, the, even the project is replaced by coursework yes. so they don't have any exposure um, other than that do you remember anything that happened very Uh, yeah, very, okay. Something that. else which I would like to also say that, see, today we have uh, project facilities. Uh, no, before we let's come to that. the interaction among the faculty. No, no. Before th this is an interesting one. Okay, actually. please. Uh, actually, you know, uh, today we have in every project facilities. In fact, the idea of having uh, project, uh, you know, uh, having the teaching material. See, in those days we used to have the overhead transparencies. Uh, first was the epidemiscope where you have it by reflection process you know you get the thing projected then you, you uh, bring the printed book and project on you know yeah. keep it on the projector it projects onto the screen onto the screen yeah. or afterwards it was on a transparent sheet you know yeah, walk yeah. through where we, you can we you call know, ohp ohp where you can look at the student and talk whereas mm -hmm. in the other case you have to be looking at the uh, projector and talk whereas in this case you will be allowed to look at the student and talk so in those when we are in that era Professor Natarajan was head of the department, and he called me and one day he said, "Kumar Sami, we would not uh, like to have it. We would like to have a projector of this type, the projector which we see today, mm. this type of projector, but not so small. They were huge, big size projector, each costing at that time about five lakh rupees." He said, "Kumar Sami, one party has come saying that such a projector is available. I want you to evaluate and get one for the department." Okay, and then. i got the material i got discussed i discussed with him and found that you know the projector bulb has limited life the way in which you know we are going to prepare do i said it is very much ahead of our time so i went back and told professor natarajan that i don't think uh, this projector will be useful for our department because it requires an entirely different type of thinking for the faculty and investing so much money on such a equipment Is, is it uh, projecting used. directly uh, from a No no you have to prepare materials on your uh, computer oh. and then you should at that time laptop was not available you have to have a computer with the computer you should project so preparation uh, things all required a uh, different line of thinking so i felt that this is really not i possible. think if i am correct it is a huge box like yeah, huge box. in fact projector. first time you know in I the know, icsr present day projectors are so cute like a briefcase yes. it was more like a Uh, suitcase which uh, much much bigger much than bigger. suitcase in fact you know icsr american tourist bag most most uh, yeah that that, uh, that uh, 23 kg yes. bag uh, of that type uh, yeah. you know which was uh, afterwards it was bought in the icsr where they were using it and uh, you know uh, quite a few times you know i think uh, i don't remember who was the director he wanted to use it uh, for his lectures when he gave externally so this was kept in the car and taken so you know you take it three or four times the whole thing doesn't work afterwards yeah. the very day, in the uh, instrument i know uh, those instruments were so later delicate. you know when such compact projectors came i felt that uh, professor natarajan gave me an opportunity to be uh, to study uh, that to to start with as a starting point but then i did not really utilize okay how about the interactions among the faculty how it was there before how is it now when you are about to go okay. in terms of communication for example those days only professors had phone the others did not have phone intercoms and uh, labs used to have and then of course you can come out and talk to people and now what i am observing is people are talking through emails your experience please tell me yeah yeah so initially the phone was available as you rightly said phone was available only one phone where we can externally connect in the office and then uh, professors will have internal only they won't even have the other one but then uh, you know so each professor had their own method by which uh, uh, they will have one external connection from the office to the head of the, head of the laboratory room and then they were having it 
and uh, there were you know uh, call transfer devices mm. where you put the, take the receiver put it on that and that one will be connected to our intercom mm. uh, that type of devices were all okay. used yeah. mm-hmm. subsequently you know uh, this uh, internal phone was given to all faculty later uh, you know uh, internal phone uh, the external force phone was also given in fact uh, i should also tell about the way in which we bought the computer you may not believe that iit banned people uh, faculty buying computers i remember once i also had a yes. problem and you know and the, do you know how we got a computer for our lab we called it as a data logger oh <laughs> so it, it was 80 you know 86 uh, processor with 8087 core processor and uh, it cost us 3 lakh rupees now every faculty has got two three desktop and uh, two three laptops and uh, and even after buying uh, uh, you know computer or data logger whatever your name this creative audio set we cannot buy hmm. uh, you know the audit will raise an objection are you going to hear music so it was not allowed so we we cannot buy uh, such devices now you go to any lab the research scholars sitting before the pc you can see them connecting to the pc and then having a earphone what they hear we don't <laughs> know <laughs> no, even things no, are changing you know even buying cameras were not allowed yes so german professors who were they brought their own cameras or they could put as an equipment for the laboratory and bring it mm. but uh, under the, the institute furnish institute funding we cannot buy a camera yeah they were very strict it was, it was not it was not allowed in those days and then, uh, 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 yes yeah. email communications you know you did you experience during your time or uh, no, yeah. no no email actually initially came for the through ernet system mm-hmm. uh, you know people who are friendly with the computer center could get an email address and then you know they they only through them you know you can get it was not available in your uh, desktop anything like that so for through the ernet connectivity was very really limited if yeah, i remember no, was, okay. no, even though you know, there was a siemens computer the terminals being brought there uh, it, it was not in fact you know the, even the computer which iit madras got as the best computer in the country ibm 1970 ibm 370 ibm 370 dash 155 yeah. had 512k byte memory in the main memory <laughs> and that was supposed to be the biggest the biggest in the country whole country at that time even germans did not have that yeah. kind of a computer in their country but now it's all available on palm top you know <laughs> a, 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 all the memory is so big uh, so what now you uh, know left uh, left around uh, you know irritated in 2011 11 and between 2011 and now you may not know much nowadays all of us talk only through emails even to say hello come for coffee tak 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 okay so so you really really use the electronic electronics they are very modern very, they are very modern in using the technology and it's not just invitation for you know even uh, some of the things different kind of exchanges also happen anyway uh, okay during the our, our period but what do you feel about talking face to face in yeah, fact okay. if if given a chance i would call her and directly go and meet and then talk and it's much more effective than just giving a message to a chat whatsapp no, but then even that if you remember prasanna uh, some had other departments attempted to have a social interaction if i remember correct prasanna veera action initiated how put in my time no no, no that was <laughs> continued by you but then it was started by him for this yes, professor radha krishnan started the in fact you know he had prasanna nagalingam who used to organize the right. games and things like that and uh, you know by the way prasanna radha krishnan was head of, uh, my guide He was also head of the department from 90 to 93 uh, or uh, and he, uh, he did you know several changes i should say uh, one was to make the you know msb corridor colorful because that other was a uh, blank so he called me and told me that you know you uh, get photographs from various each laboratory labs. various laboratories and arrange so that uh, you know any uh, visitor walking can get an idea of what is happening you know photographs and you know areas uh, people who are involved so that was made and then another thing he, which he wanted was to computerize the uh, department system so he again asked me to make you know student information system faculty information system stores information system where are they now uh, uh, <laughs> i sat with that you know vendor and explained to him our procedures and he used to make you know dbs 
yeah. his uh, program and then you know i used to uh, correct all that in the uh, faculty interface uh, system uh, you so, you may remember uh, that you are one who did not give the data yeah i did and okay. uh, your date of birth was 00000 uh, So yeah, th- that means i will never retire <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact uh, you remember during your you uh, know that 2006 2009 there was a review uh, meeting a review uh, committee yeah. visiting us and he helped me a lot with uh, all the data <laughs> since he had all the ex- experience so i requested professor kumar sami to compile the information no to put it them in it, proper in yeah. a tabular columns yeah. uh, bar it chart it came out to be a very beautiful report yeah. it was appreciated by the visitors you uh, know well another two two more things which uh, professor vidyakshan you know did was one was about the uh, projecting what mechanical department can do mm-hmm. you see you, uh, there were conferences which are being conducted by the you know various sections separately where the you know, up to date knowledge was but then there was no forum where mechanical department came together mm. so he organized one uh, seminar advances in mechanical engineering i think i also gave a yes, lecture at in the hotel kanimara kanimara uh, uh, you know where the faculty of mechanical engineering of iit madras uh, told about what are all the uh, strengths what are our future plans we had if i am correct even a proceeding was yeah, proceeding, very nice I proceeding was made. Mm. and we we made a, a you know real good exposure So and another improvement which he made was about the examination scheduling invigilation again i was the invigilation in charge chosen by him at that time and then he told me kumar sami i want you to put a schedule where a student will be isolated by a different subject all around that means uh, you know sitting arrangement should be in such a way that even if he turns any of the side he cannot really see and uh, this type of seating arrangement is now being used by gate examination mm, mm, mm. it has gone to that extent so so i you know i made some programs uh, to uh, to make uh, so you have you know, involved in yourself in every activity on the campus the, you know whenever yeah. an opportunity is given i have really like that's very what very staff club also you were involved in some way if i remember uh, or not so much no i was the uh, yeah one 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 term i was there uh, i don't know what was the name called but uh, as a president no no uh, not president, president. Uh, by, by the way we were also together in one of the very important activity on the campus one 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 you were the chairman and i was the vice chairman vice chairman and, and uh, during the period you know when you were not there abroad yeah. i was acting sir <laughs> <laughs> and we devised you know some methods of proper uh, constitution of committees to recruit recruitment things recruitment like that, uh, yes. we streamline many things in fact uh, it's nice that now i have been called to interact with them so i have in fact you know from the uh, conversion of society also i think it came during uh, that period no, no. only we had you know a campus educational society which is now changed into a trust so the major change came during our time for various reasons uh, good professor kumar sami <laughs> so i think uh, you have, we have covered right from the time you joined this institute and the time you retired in 2011 and uh, hope you have a very pleasant and peaceful retired life yeah actually after uh, you know after my uh, retirement uh, or super innovation i should say i decided that i will not go for teaching because i have done enough of teaching i wanted to empower people who will really be interested in learning okay so i could locate some industries where the management was interested in so i are uh, doing giving some kind of a training or yeah a, yeah i was i was you are still a resource person yeah. because the kind of experience you have not many people have so i'm very so i i i don't take up a job where i must do design hmm. if the industry says that i have a designer can you guide him to proper design i will training. take up the job training the designers yeah, yeah. nice but one organization is you know designing pumps which are suitable to be fitted into the aircraft mm-hmm. another organization is doing it for you know uh, the pumps to be fit uh, advanced pumps to be fitted in cnc machines, machines. <coughs> another uh, you know in the uh, uh, pumps which will go into the deep mm-hmm. multi phase flows so you are a pump man <laughs> 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 anyway my case after super innovation so i just continue and that's it but then recently you know mm-hmm. uh, my my idea that i should not go for teaching you are changing was broken huh. in this semester 
because uh, the you went to triple it i mean iit tirupati iit tirupati because director of iit tirupati called me one day and asked me kumar sami can you help us in uh, taking the course on turbo machines oh yeah so that was my you, you know are, basic yeah, problem but you, you are so the, when somebody yeah, says uh, you are the person uh, so to take uh, i immediately agree. once you are a teacher you are teacher for ever so <laughs> you cannot come away even if you don't want to continue so can but if you if you remember you know when you are uh, when you are in us mm. under the assignment you even call me to come as a teacher there mm. i did not really uh, accept at that time because you know my family uh, because we were neighbors one one neighbor the other right right okay. <coughs> so should you, anything else so i have one question sure the, your mention of vanavani uh, stimulus for this Uh, there was one father murphy from lyola college who was involved in the that was very first very first it's very first no, no. very first very no. first was his uh, influence felt even during your time i just want no no uh, no this is like this our chairman also is by rotation so they bring in a new idea when i joined i didn't want to get into the history i said this is a given thing how do i optimize the resources how do i really give back to the society that was our aim given this uh, thing if it has to init you know start initially then all those experiences will be useful so already established we have to run it in optimal way see some <coughs> what I, i will supplement see some of the ideas which we get in the way in which we recruit faculty train them mold them uh, came to his mind he found that you know such things are not systems are not followed properly in one one it is better that we inculcate those things into the minds of the Uh, senior uh, staff Teaching. members of the and then give them proper you know training sit with them to make them understand though that those things are necessary in a teaching environment in fact uh, to me it came in the right time the professor natarajan i think he is the one who said you also take up the board you know he gave two options i didn't t- tell him <laughs> either co- you know chairman council of warden or the <laughs> vanavani i choose the later one vanavani for one reason uh, my experience in the hostel sector was not that <laughs> good uh, there are some incident not involving the students but some of the hostel employees so i didn't want that kind of uh, I, i we are peace loving people we don't want to be involved in that so i took up the second one this vanavani chairmanship two years he was also there helping me and uh, we help each other and it's good that you identified me <laughs> to in fact in the you know i i will also say as a chairman council of wardens uh, one change which i brought in i think it is still continuing is uh, i felt that as a chairman it's my prerogative to make allotment for the students earlier before my period it was done by uh, gsu guidance and counseling gcu sorry gcu volunteers will make the allotment but i said no i am the chairman council of wardens i am admitting so i got the list from the ja office and then i allotted the rooms in random depending upon the number of vacancies available because they were spread into all the hostel and without any this thing in fact so even ad- uh, research scholars and uh, undergraduates are separated yeah yeah that's correct okay. so you know initially as a policy we decide which hostel how many rooms are there uh, uh, the kind uh, or kind of mix uh, one should have actually that type of thing we put there. and then afterwards i get the list from the je gate or the whatever, whatever admissions office and then offer academy section was really not very happy they said that before the student joins how can you allot i said no if the student does not join after that room is vacant i can always reallot to somebody else but then why should i be sitting until you finish your admission process go to the next desk and then take the uh a lot process kumar sami you should have been the chairman when i joined this place as a research scholar you know i joined this place as a research scholar and i went to gymkhana that's a office uh, you know, sports activity i introduced myself i am also a volleyball player that is the, f- the wrong thing i did immediately the message went to the volleyball captain he wanted me in his hostel his hostel happened to be a undergraduate hostel tapti then i tried my way i don't want to stay in tapti i went to the pg hostel krishna uh, no? then i was told to meet the warden assistant warden for sir b vishwanathan he was in the chemistry lab among the you know standing there near the bureaus and papers 
Then he said, peeped up like this, yes, what do you want? Sir, I joined as a research scholar. I would like to uh, you know, take a room in a PG hostel, Kaveri or Krishna. No rooms available. Then, same evening, I had to play a league match, if I remember correctly, against Stanley Medical. So, with my experience, I won with whatever students. Then everybody said, oh, where are you, in which hostel you are? The same Professor Vishwanathan also was there watching me playing. I, had I known that you are a, such a good player, I would have given you this room <laughs> in Krishna Kaveri. So, allotment was done arbitrarily those days and I happened to stay in Taptiya. But I learned, uh, one thing they respected me. as only one PhD scholar in that and I played for Tapti also. They gave me a special gift of 250 rupees those days for playing. <laughs> Similarly, for transfer of staff also in the hostel sector, there used to be again, you know, politics playing. Somebody cooked feeling that, you know, Austin uh, yeah. should be only from him. So, I also made everything. That is the prerogative of the chairman. Professor so Kumar Sami is very systematic. <laughs> Anything given is streamlines and he was uh, really helping me during my time as HOD. And, but uh, even pay slip, you know, they were going to computer center. I said, why should the hostel management go to computer center for getting a pay slip? On the desktop, you know, I wrote my own program and gave it to them, saying, untrained my office staff so that they will prepare the sheet. Everything, you know, was done. You know, every... I felt that it was really necessary. Because at some point of time, IIT was always feeling that man hostel management is separate, institute is separate. And some of the things they were linking. I wanted to really show that independently hostel can be run without any issue. Yes, sir. Thank you, Professor Kumar Sami. I think you took me way back to 73 and we travelled all along and it's a nice meeting you and hope so we keep was, meeting you. Nice, <laughs> yes.